don't think it's a hot take to say that the Sages and Tears of the Kingdom could be improved. It's mainly just a dedicated shortcut to their abilities so we don't have to chase them around the battlefield. However, this doesn't mean that they are worthless and I wanted to do a deep dive into each Sage to find some useful tips you may not know. Today we'll start with Tulin. Of all the Sages, Tulin is an undeniable legend for his ability to pop crit spots when it matters most. He'll stun anything that moves and without hesitation, including that rock Octorok you needed to repair your weapon. He'll even take one for the team when you need him to. I think he has the most well-implemented power since you don't have to find him to activate it while gliding. On the ground, you can use this to blow a bunch of bombs at your enemies for a quick kill. It's even good for blowing all that loot off of Sky Islands that you didn't want to begin with. No. Oh my God. One trick you can do with this power, strangely coined Tulin Pumping or Tulin Boosting, can be used to maintain the horizontal velocity generated from his power. There are two methods that work and I believe it comes down to preference. As soon as you activate his ability, quickly enter bullet time, redeploy your glider, then do it again. The other method is to quickly redeploy your glider three times. This is my preferred method as I found it to be more consistent, but it's up to you. You'll know you did it right if Link maintains a straight flight path without a quick change in elevation at the end of his gust. It's incredibly useful, and I highly recommend learning it. Next up, Sidon. If you're like me, you may be guilty of writing Sidon off as useless outside of the Water Temple. And I couldn't have been more wrong. It's well known that he's very useful for buffing Zora weapons, where by simply activating his ability, you can double the attack power of those weapons. But this will also provide heat resistance in hot climates. Anytime in this series where I'm near lava or in the desert, I'm using Sidon's ability. Don't let your passion for fashion be ruined by a little heat. The resistance lasts for over two minutes and it is very easy to reapply. Combine the active shield with shock arrows to create large electric fields. Where you normally wouldn't be able to shoot bomb arrows like on Death Mountain, all you have to do is pop the shield and you're good to go. The shield can block one attack. Use this and Beta Mulduga to jump out of the sand, launching you into the air without taking damage and opening it up to a stun. The next Sage gets a lot of hate and I think you should reconsider. When it's cold and you just need to light a fire, Yonobo is there for you. Use him as your rechargeable lighter for campfires or cooking pots. In grassy areas, he can create a wide updraft. We may not have ravioli anymore, but who needs him? Quickly float above your enemies and give him the business. When operating a Zonai device, Yonobo will automatically attach himself to the front, allowing you to shoot him off. How quickly he is ready to gin depends how far away he is from the target. When he is right next to the target, this happens. Use this quick reload to take out Hinoxes and Mulduga in one phase. I tested this on Gleox, but it didn't go very well. The cheapest way I've found to do this is by using a homing cart with a steering stick on top, but any drivable vehicle could work. The Desert Queen may be the most straightforward sage. Activate her like a lightning rod and call down a lightning strike where you shoot your bow. This makes an effective offensive weapon, but she can also be used for mining. One strike can destroy most ore deposits, but tougher rocks may require a few strikes. In the depths, she can be used as sonar. Of course, there are plenty of other ways to get light, but if you're desperate, maybe it can help. I found that she is a solid ranged option against taluses and frocks. Use her ability to call down lightning on the deposits without needing to be on top of them. She's somewhat effective on Gloom Hands as well, but you will need to use her alongside other options. I tried using her to fish, but the lightning doesn't seem to strike a large area of water. You can use her to light a campfire though. Wait. See, easy campfire. Small spoiler warning for Tears of the Kingdom Sages. The fifth sage, but certainly not least, Minoru rounds out the squad as your own personal mech battlebot. To be honest, I don't pilot her very often. 
She's a little slow and doesn't hit as hard as Link can by himself. But she can be used to safely traverse Gloom, and she can also walk through lava. Unaffected by Gloom, give her your extra Gloom weapons and she can take full advantage of them without taking damage. Use a wing to her back and she can glide through the air. Unfortunately, just like flying a wing regularly, it will still expire. Luckily, Minoru can fall from any height without taking damage. Strap a rocket to her back to quickly gain the high ground. And just like riding any other mount, Link can freely shoot arrows from up top. This height makes Minoru great for apple picking as well. She's also quite useful when picking up fairies since they tend to fly off if you scare them away, but you should be able to grab them with ease. Probably the most useful thing that Minoru can do is that she is great at mining ore deposits. Her hands don't need to be fused with anything in order to destroy them. It was staring at us the whole time and we didn't even know. Hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the sages. I can only hope that future DLC will bring further improvements to them, like a shortcut button for their abilities, and even more tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.